Now time for Behind the Palace Walls. Well, I bring you the latest from the royal household, Harry and Meghan. His future in Hollywood appears to be in doubt amid reports that they are no longer taken seriously by the people in the industry. In the meantime, members of the royal family reportedly had concerned for Prince Andrew following the release of a very royal scandal on Amazon Prime, which, according to one royal commentator, paints the Duke of York as the most obnoxious individual you could ever have the misfortune to meet. Well, let's discuss some of these stories with Royal Broadcaster Helena Shard. Wow. <laughs> They've not minced their words about him, have they? Well, let's start with Harry and Meghan, because um, unfortunately for them, it doesn't, it's not looking good, is it? It's not looking good, Nana. I mean, honestly, we're hearing so many different things um, from America, but, you know... Things about Meghan Markle ready to, you know, take her gloves off and write something and come out with a new memoir. And it's hardly surprising. I mean, it's now that the US are just not taking them seriously and are seeing them for what they are. And anyone that is going to trash their family and trash the royal family, um, there's going to be a problem. And I think now this is there's a sort of ripple effect and obviously people are coming out of the woodwork and they're talking about um, how, how they are. And I think, you know, when you've got things written in The Hollywood Reporter, you do take it seriously. Um, it's seen as the industry Bible, as we're told. And um, so there's a lot of criticism that's written in good uh, good places. So, of course, this then is the reenactment of, of what's happened in the British tabloids. Um, and there's lots of different things that have been said about them. So, of course, there is so much distrust um, and dislike towards the couple. Um, and, and it's genuine. You know, it really, really is. I mean, if you think about all these thoughts of, you know, Duchess difficult, let's go back to Bill Simmons and grifters, um, and now seeing all of this in, I don't know, I, I, is it dictator in heels or what, whatever it is, and not talking so kindly about Prince Harry either. I mean, what what is there and what is left? Um, they are working for themselves. They're not working for the royal family. You know, they're hanging on to their royal titles and people are beginning to see them for what they are. And I think... You know, people have wondered slightly, but then seeing it in good, you know, magazines and good, you know, The Hollywood Reporter, you, you have to take it seriously. And I think as well, you know, the backlash is coming out and saying, no, 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 this isn't the case, as we've heard. Uh, Meghan Mar Markle has been, you know, has got staff to say certain things. You start thinking, hang on, I don't know, we can't take you serious. It's, it's best just to step back in situations like that. I love that. It's not good. It's not a good look. I think it's, it's funny, not going a, a well. dictator in heels, they might call me that. <laughs> not really. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? That, that is actually quite a funny comment that someone would make. You can sort of see it now, can't you? Poor Harry. If it's true and if rumours are to be believed, and you know there's a lot of nonsense swelling out there, but there do seem to be an absurd number of people now coming out and saying the same thing. And they are on communications advice. So I think it's number 11 now. So there's got to be something in some of it. And they're not denying much of it either. Uh, let's let's uh, move on to Prince Andrew and his uh, very royal scandal that is uh, coming out in, on Amazon Prime. It's already out, actually. I know people who've already seen it. Have you seen it? And what was your view, if you have? I, I've seen, I haven't seen it all. I have seen bits and pieces. And I, I have to say, you know, Michael Sheen is an incredibly good actor. Um, although he's not pro-monarchy, I do know that. So that's slightly disappointing. But um, plays Prince Andrew incredibly well. Uh, so obviously, as you say, it's out on Amazon. I think it's a three-part series. Um, and it, it, it it's good. It's captured people's imagination. It's obviously not all true. Um, but I think, unfortunately, Prince Andrew does come across as obnoxious. Um, and I think, who is it that said it's, you know, the most obnoxious individual you'd ever have the misfortune to mm, ever meet right. or something like that? Yes, it was one um, more commentator. Yes, that's right. And... I think actually the royal family are pretty worried about Prince Andrew. Um, and I, I, you know, I think he is arrogant. We know that he is arrogant. We, we hear about him 
the, the, the whole thing is not a good look. Um, although we know that Prince Andrew has, has you know, claims to be innocent in all of this. Um, uh, I just feel, I feel sorry for his daughters. I, I do feel sorry for his daughters. Um, it may be an interesting watch, etc. But I think we can't help thinking about Royal Lodge. Um, and it's this whole not good, it's not a good look for the royal family. You know, it is time for him to move out of Royal Lodge and mm. for him to look at his daughters and look at things going forward, um, where obviously Prince William will, will need more help in due course. Um, mm. I, I, you know, what can I say? Michael Sheen is great. Um, he, we, we can think of uh, Prince Andrew, I mean, I've heard so much, but it's all alleged talk. Um, of him, but we have heard he is depressed about things. I've equally heard that he was almost having, you know, inviting people round to watch mm. the screening. Um, I, I just think as well, it's a completely different uh, stance, isn't it? I think it's taken from Emily's point of view. It's his, it's it's her viewpoint. Um, but also there's quite a bit that's from the heart of Buckingham Palace and Royal Lodge. I look forward to watching it all. Um, I just hope that things can move on from here um and i just we don't want to be concentrating on prince andrew at the moment we want to be mm. concentrating on how great our royal family is and how much um positive uh things are going on yeah. uh, rather than this which is obviously yeah. a bit of a slant yeah. we don't want to think about the boring, well, we don't, Helena. Uh, we, we, don't we don't really want to hear too much about him but on this particular one i, I guess it's come out on netflix so it is, if you're a royalist and you want to watch it, it might be worth a watch. It's on Amazon Prime. Helena Charp, thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Lovely to talk yeah. to you. I'm now joined by the former Labour Minister, Ivor Kaplan. Ivor, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. So it seems yeah, that uh, reform, reform are going great guns by the looks of things. I know they are around there. It's an echo chamber, obviously, because you're going uh, there where people support you. But I actually went there because I'm trying to get to all the party conferences and the energy and the amount of young people who are involved and really um, captivated by reform was astounding. Uh, I mean, we've all seen these things over the years, haven't we, if we're realistic? You know, it's it's not one thing because of the party. It's just a normal thing that seems to happen when the party is new, wherever that is. We saw it with the Lib Dems. I, I don't know when that was, about 15 years ago. You know, these things tend to happen. And it's only the two big parties where it doesn't appear to be like it is for the smaller parties. We should wait to see how reform uh, reforms and, and yeah. progresses. But uh, let, let's, let's swing ourselves now to the Labour Party. Their conference will start in earnest tomorrow. Um, a yeah. lot of people, uh, it was supposed to be a shining moment where they could say what a massive majority uh, we achieved. But unfortunately for them, it's been overshadowed uh, by freebies. Uh, wh <laughs> where do you stand with all of that? I know you're all very excited about this. You know, wherever you go in GB News, you're very excited about these so-called freebies. Look, this this happens in Parliament. The, this was given to um, to uh, Kia in particular, uh, and Rachel, I understand, and Angela, and from a donor, not from the not not from the government not from money that is the public's money, which happened previously. Mm, this yeah. was done by a donor. And that's a perfectly legitimate thing to do. It's gone through the processes and everyone is moving on. Um, no, no, they're now, not moving let's on. Quickly, let's, just, let's just quickly deal with this issue about the football stadium. Arsenal, right. Because this is actually quite important. It's, it's a matter of uh, uh, that... that Football stadiums, when they look at the issues relating to security, they have to take a set, set of decisions that are the most important to go forward. In this instance, that's why they asked Keir to move from his normal seats, which is in the normal uh, area of the stadium, into a more private area where he has the security level that he needs. Now, I don't think anyone is really you know, saying that's wrong. Of course, the prime minister should be uh, able able to have that uh, that that kind of uh, capability. Mm, yeah, but um, Prince William, who is arguably way more important than Keir Starmer and has had far more longevity, and also the previous Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, they all stood, stood in, in the stands. So I'm not I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to well, why. No, no, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Sorry. I did listen to you, Ivor. 
And I, I don't think as well that we can brush past the fact that a donor who sort of is now a peer um, has um, given... I mean, come on, would you ex allow another man to give your wife clothes? Really? Mm -hmm. He's on £167,000. He's got a property portfolio worth millions. Uh, it's not good enough, is it? Hold on. He's been a peer um, for years. Yeah. No, he's not He's not someone new to the Labour Party, just appearing, uh, like we heard previously from people who had, you know, give, given money to the Conservative Party uh, or, or spent money uh, on, you know, helicopters, you know, 40 grand a year or something like that. You know, these things happen in part of that whole process of government. The most important thing is that where you get some of these issues, you have to make sure that they are dealt with by the, the authorities of the House and they're all registered. And Keir has done that now. Eventually. That's a good step forward. And now he can get on with the conference. No, I don't think that you say that. Nobody's going to brush this under the carpet. Nobody's brushing this under the carpet. £150,000. Listen, he has spent, he has been gifted more than any other MP since 2019. And that includes Boris Johnson, who he lambasted for doing the very same thing. Remember Wallpaper Gate? I think you'll, you'll find that uh, Boris Johnson's um, reporting of these matters to the authorities was not very good compared to Keir's. All right. Well, uh, we're, we're, I think we're, we're dancing on the head of a pin here. Uh, Ivor Captain, thank you very much. He's a former Labour minister.